Today's video is an introduction to a new series of videos that I plan to do and it's based on the Isle of Lewis chessmen. Now it was a chess set that was found in Uig in the Isle of Lewis and it was a set or various pieces of a chess set and they were carved, hand carved out of walrus ivory and they were dated roughly between 1150 and 1200 AD. They be they're believed to be Viking in origin. And I've been obsessed with these uh, little guys since I started carving about five years ago. And I've always promised myself that I'm going to make a chess set from, from them. So I've actually made a start on the uh, chess set, um, which seems like ages and ages ago because uh, Covid hit. And then um, our woodcraft business got really, really busy because everyone was at home. So I've not had chance to um, do much more on it. So I managed to do two pieces. And the, um, the first piece was a warder. And luckily enough, the British Museum have done a really, really comprehensive uh, photographic um, reference to these chess pieces, which includes measurements and all sorts of things. So, um, and it does, it, the photos are from all different angles. So this is the water that I've carved. I've tried various types of um, wood and I've finally settled on sycamore. I tried lime, tried mahogany for the dark wood um, and I wasn't overly happy with any of them. Um, but sycamore seems to um, hold its edge really well. It's quite a nice carve. And um, for the darker woods, I'm going to use uh, cherry wood, which is quite hard to um, carve, but leaves a really nice dark colour. So this is the finished king. This is in um, cherry wood. As you can see, the uh, detail on the back of the chair was quite complex. But, um, I was quite pleased with how that came out. Today I'm going to carve a pawn. There were various different types of pawn that were found on the beach. But today I'm going to have a go at this one. So this is a selection of the blanks that I've cut out ready for the pawns. There's cherry at the bottom there and sycamore. And today I'm going to use the sycamore wood. So this is the first marking out of the pawn in sycamore. If you recall from the photograph from the museum, it did appear like this. And it tapered upwards as well. So. I've only marked this on here just to give me a representation to make sure I was happy. So this will be removed in a second because I'll be taking all of this out, all of that and that to give me the general shape of the pawn from that profile. And then I'll remark this in and I'll sh start shaping this out. So it's two days later because as I was carving, Claire noticed that Shap was chewing his undercarriage. So she went over and had a look and he's got a um, saw patch underneath. And um, we took him to the vets and he's now on antibiotics and he looks like this.
So during all the excitement of vets and things, I did actually manage to do a little bit on this. Um, I finished off what I had started up in the woods. So I chamfered that off, rounded it around, and it tapers upwards that way. It took a little bit of uh, playing around with because the first cut I did wasn't quite enough. So I come in again because from the side profile, looking at the uh, the photos from the museum, you can see quite a bit of the side profile, which I wasn't getting. So I think we're there now with that. It's quite difficult when taking something that's in 2D and turning it into 3D. It um, takes a little bit of trial and error to get there, but I'm pretty happy with that now. Um, so the next stage is it's got this little rosette thing on top which runs along the top here and this curve here needs to be taken out so that'll be the next thing I do so I'll be cutting a, a stop cut into here just so I leave a block in there which I can then put this in later and then try and get this chamfer right here just been looking at how I'm gonna get this to represent that and I thought one of the reasons I like doing this artifact sort of stuff is that somebody was sat doing exactly the same thing with the same problems wondering how that could go back to there and whatnot 900 years ago and it's kind of some sort of connection to the past or something which is um sounds a bit weird and wacky but it's kind of nice in a way that there was somebody so long ago sat here doing well not sat here but sat somewhere doing the same thing and having to overcome the same issues with materials and tools and things like that. I'm just taking this up and then we're all squared off ready to put in that top detail. in the end grain here so it's um quite hard to cut sometimes I think we're there that's kind of what I was after I'm gonna take that in a little tiny bit more there yeah a little tiny bit more so the next challenge is as you can see on this one, which I've drawn over a little bit there, so hopefully you can see it on the camera. This here doesn't do that. It's kind of set back. But I think what we need to do is to leave as much material here as we can. But as you can see, it's bulging out there quite a bit. So I think the next thing is to cut this in, drop that back, and then slowly drop the shoulders back, hopefully to reveal that and to get this in line with where we are with that and then I can worry about putting that in afterwards but that's the next stage
So we've gone from that to that. So as you can see, that was the bit that I had to leave as high as possible and then drop these shoulders back to the place that we'd marked out like this on this side. So it's given me that effect now. So hopefully it looks pretty similar to that. It's quite interesting because when I first saw the drawing or the pictures of this, it looked like quite a simple design. I thought, well, I'll do that one quite quickly. But um, all credit to the 900 year ago craftsman who originally done this. There's quite a bit of thought that went into lowering this shoulder and bringing this out. And yeah, there's quite, quite a, um, a complex design really, even though it looks very, very basic, very clever. We're nearly there now. I think that needs to go back a little bit there. Maybe like that. Do that now. That's pretty much it now, the main carving's done. I'm going to take it back to the workshop and just finish it off, tidy it up a little bit. 
and then uh, we'll give it a wax. So I'm back in the workshop now, just doing the tidy up that I said I was going to do. And I just wanted to talk about this quickly. Um, I'm doing the rosette on the top at the moment, as you can see in the picture here. And I'm using one of the small gouges, small flex cut gouge. And I've selected the right one that just fits over the top of there. So then I can literally draw it in. But as you can see from there, you get a really lovely finish on there. You can spend hours with a knife trying to get a finish like that and you, you won't. It won't be as good. So that's the pawn finish now. I think it was a fairly good representation of the museum piece. I'm reasonably happy with it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a new series of videos of me carving the Isla Lewis chessmen. If this is something that you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the up and coming videos. And thanks again for watching.